Christian, uh, welcome to what could potentially be the inaugural pilot of the Old Fashioned Dad podcast. Yeah, if we uh, get this thing off the ground, this will be our, our first episode. I think we're going to touch on some interesting topics today, uh, and that will be whiskey. Uh, I, I don't know too many dads, men that uh, have not had experience with whiskey and don't like whiskey. So um, I know that you like whiskey. I certainly like whiskey. The other topic that we're going to touch on that I think is near and dear to both of our hearts is being a dad. We are the Old Fashioned Dad Podcast, seeking to love dads through the person and work of Jesus Christ, entering into tough conversations on faith, God's calling, marriage, parenting, sex, all while enjoying good whiskey. I'm Christian Bringoff. And I'm Christian Harris. Thanks for joining us. Um, the other thing that I thought that we also have in common is our names are Christian. That's they it. are. They are. Nice. How about that? I don't, run, I don't run into too many Christians uh, other, than, <laughs> other than the faith, I guess. Uh, I run into people named Christopher more often than not, and that always bugs me. I've, sorry, Christophers, if you're out there. I, I just like the name Christian a lot better. <laughs> um, so. Yes, but, well, well not, not to belabor the point, but I was actually born Christopher and legally changed my name in my, uh, my early, mid-20s to Christian. As, as you should have. Th- <laughs> thank you. There we go. Thank you. Uh, should we uh, maybe dive into a little bit of the whiskey stuff before we kind of hit the bulk of the, the topic today on dad stuff? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. As maybe some of you uh, maybe were able to gain uh, or at least gather uh, the old fashioned dad podcast, a little bit of play on words. Uh, we're going to be drinking old fashions. Uh, and you know what? Old fashions can be made from pretty much any whiskey, but traditionally they are made from a bourbon uh, whiskey. And bourbon, as many of you maybe know or don't know, uh, is an American spirit. Here it is. And this one is called Rabbit Hole. And uh, actually, we're not drinking a bourbon today. This is a rye whiskey, but a whiskey nonetheless. And this one is made in Kentucky. Uh, I want to say in, oh, this one, it's in Louisville, Kentucky. And very tasty stuff, in my my opinion. Now, the old-fashioned that I'm drinking is kind of a modified one. I didn't do an orange peel. I didn't uh, do a maraschino cherry, which I know some people are saying, you know, you don't do a maraschino cherry. But I'm doing a few drops of orange bitters in mine. I'm going to do, I'll put it right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know. I've maybe got more than that. But uh, uh, Christian, what do you think of this whiskey, man? It's it's tasty. Um, you know, I am, uh, you know, this this podcast is for average dads, and I am about as average as dads come. So I know I like whiskey. <laughs> I couldn't really tell you the difference between a lot of them. So um, hopefully, it's it's an education for uh, for myself and listeners as well. So I, I think it's good. It's uh, it's smooth. It's drinkable, as as they say. But yeah, my my old fashioned is pretty modified too. It's pretty much just uh, ice and whiskey. Uh, that yeah, that's it. I'm drinking it straight. There we go. Yeah. I think we would call that just whiskey. Mm, uh, mm. But you know what, though? Who cares? Uh, <laughs> so uh, how much do you think you would pay for a bottle like this, Christian? Well, what, uh, what, what size is that there? It looks pretty good. I mean, for our audio listeners, uh, they obviously can't see the video version of this. 700, uh, 750 milliliters. Uh, I'm guessing $40. $40. That's $40. okay. Yeah. Um, you know, that's actually not a bad price. I, I think for, yeah, 40 to 50 probably sounds about right here in Washington because of our fun triple tax that we have, you're going to pay around 90 for this. Oh, whoa. Wow. Oh. Okay. I yeah. mean, I say, when I say 40, I like, I'm like, Ooh, that's expensive. You know, that's, but I also drink like three buck Chuck wine. So, you know, <laughs> Hey, nothing wrong with that. We How can get into another podcast, <laughs> Netflix and three buck Chuck. Uh, perfect. Exactly. Perfect. And some Big Macs. Yeah. Um, ooh, Big Macs sound really good right now. Mm. It does sound good. Mm. Do you like McDonald's? Uh, you know, they used to be my, my go-to um, fast food just because they used to have like the dollar menu and stuff. Um, yeah. But anytime I eat there now, I just feel gross and sick. Uh, I've kind of converted over to Jack in the Box because I can eat any of their burgers and I don't feel just disgusting afterwards. 
You don't, you don't feel like you're just a sweaty mess. No, it, I don't think it's the grease. You know, I'm guessing, you know, I'm not a doctor, you know, my, my wife's a dietitian. She could probably dig into it, but it, it, it seems like the McDonald's stuff is way more processed. And I think my body at this age is just kind of rejecting the artificialness of it. The evil is just rejecting the evil. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, does your, with your wife being a dietitian, does she, does she object whenever you eat any fast food? You know, she also used to be a chef. So, uh, she's a, a very much a moderation, you know, all things okay. moderation type person. Uh, it's kind of funny actually when we were dating, uh, you know, I thought I'd be sweet and, you know, bring her some McDonald's and, uh, and she went to Bastyr university, which is like super granola, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, tree hugger. holistic and stuff. Yeah. And McDonald's is like, the Monsanto of fast food, you know, to them. Yep. So, um, it was the devil. So she found it kind of funny. She was very sweet about it, but, uh, all her friends were like, how dare he? <laughs> so, it's like you clubbed but, a bunch of baby seals, you exactly. know, while torturing she, puppies. <laughs> right. But she, she did not use her better judgment and she, uh, ended up marrying me and uh, here we are, you know, but 13 wow. years later, 14 years later. So 14 years later and, uh, 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 one kid, right? One kid. Yep. Nine, nine year old son. And, uh, as we're recording this, you know, we're kind of on the, the, the lock in the home, the forced homeschooling. Uh, and so we're getting to, to know how challenging that can be. So have you, have you done, uh, any of the homeschooling, uh, with, with your son? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, my wife is still in a, uh, essential, uh, business role or whatever. So she works, you know, part-time uh, a couple of days yeah. a week. So we kind of take turns. So we're, got on the same page as far as like a schedule and um he fortunately you know uh, goes to really good you know public school here and so they've been providing you know daily updates and curriculum and they actually just dropped off like a month's worth of of their their work um yesterday so so he has schoolwork we're not having we're not totally on our own but we still have to implement it and um you know it's been i mean i'm sure this could be a whole podcast episode but you know i used to think i was pretty patient and then I had a kid uh, who was very li- much like me. Um, <laughs> and so this is just as, as growing for me and challenging for me as it probably is for, for him not being around his friends and, uh, mm. and stuff, but he's a very spirited kid and uh, kind of keeping him on task is, is very challenging. So it's a lot of deep breaths for me and working on, you know, not, not yelling and the kind of stuff that seems like it should be pretty basic <laughs> for, for a father, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, it's ironic that, that, our constant theme to him is controlling his emotions and responses. And that's the thing that I have the biggest trouble with. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, I, I think I'm, uh, uh, I was, I was home all day with my, my daughters. Um, I've got uh, uh, seven and a nine year old uh, daughters. And, uh, and I know that you know that, but obviously for the audience, but sure. um, they, uh, I mean, for the better part of the day, they, they spent, uh, uh, what I think was some fairly successful time playing Legos uh, at the at the kitchen table. I mean, they made messes literally everywhere. Um, there was there was no point in trying to get them to clean anything. Um, and I think I failed at uh, getting them to do any homework whatsoever. I I was successful though at uh, making sure that they did not have like oodles of screen time today. Mm-hmm. So. I, I think like on that end, um, I can hang my hat on, on that as a dad going, okay, they didn't have like eight hours of screen time today. Cause I think I would feel like a pretty terrible dad if. Sure. So, if, sometimes if, that's a success. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like did, did they do any math? No. Did, did they do any reading? No. Did they do any chores? Kind of. Okay, what did what did you do as a dad with them? I made sure that they didn't have nine hours of screen time. All right, uh, they're yeah. they're live. They 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 got a little little science, right? Some physics. I mean, math, yeah. the, the they, they, <laughs> art, and the geometry with the Lego building. They yeah, and uh, the the physics being they they jumped off of their bed and experienced gravity <laughs> and just you know hurt an ankle or something like that. Um, uh, you, you know what? I think might also be kind of a a good thing for us to do. Uh, cause a lot of our audience doesn't know, uh, you know, who we are, what we're about, obviously, mm, but true, um, yeah, yeah. maybe a good introduction about like who you are, who I am. Um, why, why even take the time to listen to uh, a couple of average dads, which that's sure. what we are. 
Sure. But I, friend, why don't, well, for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you, I don't know. Why don't you talk, talk yourself up a little bit, Christian? Sure. Sure. Uh, well, I'll do my best. Uh, yeah. Christian Harris. Uh, I live in Seattle. Well, well technically Buren, but most people in the country aren't going to know where that is. So yeah, Seattle, Seattle, Washington, and uh, I own a indie real estate brokerage here. So a small business owner, um, been married 14 years, you know, Christian, uh, became a Christian when I was in high school. Um, our, you know, our church here is going through some uh, pastoral changes and stuff. So, you know, that's been interesting. And now we're going through the whole COVID-19 stuff. So we're locked down and uh, using technology to, you know, try to stay in touch and maintain that human connection. Hence, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. how we're doing here. It's kind of funny. We're launching this podcast in the midst of that. It was going to be a, you know, fireside chat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sipping on some some whiskey, uh, but uh, you know now we're practicing our social distancing. So <laughs> we're being soon. we're being responsible. Yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, nine year old son, uh, very spirited, um, and I guess how we know each other. I mean, uh, I think initially the community group or, or small group, you know, Bible study that my wife and I met at um, back at at Mars Hill Church back in the day, uh, two thousand six. Yeah, um, a long time ago. The house we met at. Um, had a whole bunch of single gals living there and your future wife, uh, Julia was one of them. That's right. And so yep. that's, that was kind of, you know, then she started dating you and you guys got married. And um, so then I think we ended up both living kind of in the, the West Seattle area and reconnecting yep. there and uh, yeah, just kind of stayed in touch and stayed friends. And yeah, I think that's, that's the, the big picture the 30,000 yeah. foot view. You, you, you missed, you missed one thing mm. that, I think is important is you, you have a military background. Yes. Yes, I do. Yep. Yeah. I can't tell you more. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <to fight. laughs> I, it's not that sexy. Uh, now, yeah, I've been to army national guard for 17, it'll be 17 years this year. Um, started off communications as enlisted transitioned to military intelligence and then four or five years ago, transitioned uh, to warrant officer. So, uh, yeah, so I'm still and still doing that, waiting to get called up here for state COVID relief. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen, but it could. So didn't they could activate a, the National Guard for Washington? Uh, yes, but they don't just activate like the whole guard. It depends okay. on what they need and the different MOSs or, or job you know skill sets of different units. Um, so my unit's a linguistic unit, and so we've actually for a couple months been helping the real world, uh, the health department translate uh, COVID nineteen awareness literature into different languages oh okay okay uh, but so we're not typically the ones that they would call up to patrol the streets or you know okay. hand or, or fight fires or stuff like that that would be more uh infantry and engineer units that's that, that kind of thing how many I, I know this is somewhat of a tangent and it's delaying me talking about myself but uh how many national guard are available for washington state or do you know that you know, I bet you a simple Google search could figure that out. Um, Probably. I, I do not know. Let's, uh, how about you? Well, I'll look that up while you I'll talk, I'll talk about, about myself while you, while you do a goggle search of that. Exactly. Okay. Uh, well, uh, like you said, I, I, I sometimes forget how far back our friendship goes, uh, but it, it goes back to the early 2000s. Um, and uh, I think I've always been greatly appreciative of that because I think it's, it's, it's been fairly consistent and stable. Uh, where that has something that's been lacking um, throughout some of my life, but I've always appreciated it. Um, so uh, my name is Christian, uh, like Christian Harris, but my name is Christian Bringoff. Uh, I've been married uh, 12 years. So October will be 13 years. And I have two daughters, uh, ages uh, seven and almost 10. And... Um, I am a mental health counselor. I run a group practice, a private group, private group practice here in uh, the Burien area. But like Christian said, you know, it's in the Seattle area, but it's called Burien Counseling. And, uh, you know, really the goal is to work with people with experience in relational and mental health uh, issues. And so that's what I do for kind of a, uh, like my main job. And, uh, and then I'm also a Christian. Um, Wait, wait, are you? Are you a Christian? Christian? <laughs> I, 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 am, I love that joke. I'm, I'm a, I, I'm a, <laughs> my name is Christian, but I'm uh, a, no, I was going to say another religion, but never mind. Um, <laughs> no, yes. 
<laughs> I am a Christian. Uh, love Jesus and uh, definitely uh, informs the way that I uh, see life. Uh, so, um, and the way that I, you know, parent, the way that I drink whiskey, if that's a thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's me. That's, uh, that's how I, how I do things. Um, I like long walks on the beach and, uh, fireside <laughs> chats with a, a good single malt, uh, scotch. Nice. On Washington beaches. Cause those are cold and rocky. Yeah. That's where the fire comes in. That's oh, okay. where afterwards, you need warm that. up afterwards. Yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah, you really do. <laughs> yeah. But no, no. Um, I, you know, I'm a little biased. I think you're a good counselor. We've actually come to see you for, you know, different areas of frustration for our son over the years. Oh, like um, do now that pays the main bills for you. Do you have any side hustles that you want to share uh, with our audience? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Um, yes, I, I do have a side hustle. Um, that's, it's, it's turned into something. It's kind of taken on a life of its own, but, uh, I guess I would fit the term of social media influencer. Um, I, in the men's world as well as the, uh, sorry, not men's world, but men's wear world. Uh, boots, denim, leather jackets, uh, whiskey, and uh, starting to branch out into cigars too. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, which, as I understand, Christian, you're a cigar uh, partaker. I, I do know more about cigars than I do whiskey, but they are. I do know they go well together. Yes, I've 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 heard this and I've experienced it a time or two, um, but uh, I've I've gotten into the world of social media influencing and photography. Uh, and, uh, my name on Instagram is denim and, uh, whiskey. And so, uh, I suppose if you're listening to this podcast, you can look me up and, uh, see the photography. I'm not actually a really big fan of the term social media influencer. Um, I like the term photographer better, but, uh, cause it seems like anybody with a cell phone, I suppose, could just take some pictures and be a social media influencer. So, but that is a side hustle I have. Very nice. Um, what, I mean, we've already got just kind of chatted, but is there any uh, particular direction we want to take this first episode or just kind of an <clears throat> initial introduction and uh, we'll leave it there and kind of pick up, yeah, I, I guess for people who have actually <clears throat> stuck with us this long, what can they expect from future episodes? Yeah, well, I think, I think from future episodes uh, and for those who have stuck with us for <laughs> for this long uh thank you and uh there'll be a bag of ice waiting for you uh to put your head on for the headache that you just gained um i hopefully hopefully there'll be you know some comedic relief uh some comedy here some some education on whiskey uh but also to kind of like talk about uh being a dad uh because that's something that christian and i uh both are uh and christian you've been a dad for nine years now um, and when's your, is your son going to be 10 anytime soon or, uh, he just turned nine in, in March. Just turned nine. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure it feels like maybe 20 years, but uh, it feels like it's been, it's been a, a particular struggle for us. He's been in like four different schools and stuff. So we could get into all that later, but yeah. Yeah. My gosh. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and I've been, uh, a father of, of two daughters. I, I have no idea what it means to be a father to a son. Like, I think that just scares me. Um, and, uh, but I'm a father to two daughters, which is also scaring me too. Yeah, also, that'd be terrifying. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I there's there's so many things that are starting to cross my mind at the moment right now. But uh, you know, I, I think I think I wanted to, you know, at least for at least for the first couple of episodes, be be fairly raw. I mean, hopefully have a direction here. But at least for this, you know, for the intro episode, is like set the tone. Like, hey, we're gonna we're going to kind of be raw here. We're going to talk about, um, you know, average dad, average Joe, uh, stuff like, uh, uh, some of the thoughts that I've had over the, and I've shared these with you, Christian is, um, you know, what does it mean to be a dad that cares, um, in a culture where dads are not, uh, they're not really anything, you know, they're not really cared about They're They're really kind of seen as uh, tertiary, uh, to moms, they're not really seen as, you know, critical pieces to uh, a child, you know, a daughter or a son's uh, development. And, uh, and I, and I think that is, uh, it's frustrating. And it's, uh, it's, 
it's it's hard to it, it's it's hard to combat. And then you know the other pieces that kind of come into it is like you know how does faith and and Christ um, uh, come in and inform the way that I'm a dad, you're a dad, and uh, and I think uh, these are these are obviously large topics that no one episode could fully address. But I think if we're looking at things from a thirty thousand foot level on uh, kind of the inaugural uh, episode podcast, uh, you know, these are the things that we would we would simply not simply, but we would attempt to try and tackle. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I would. I would say to be to put maybe a finer point on that, you know, in in society, it's you know, American modern society. Um, I'd say uh, just observing, you know, it's not. Yes, it's to some degree the you know the the the, the dads are kind of tertiary or whatever, but I'd say even in larger society, they're. Um, I hate to use the word marginalized because it's. Um, so loaded, but they're they're kind of the 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 dumb dad, the incompetent dad. They're they're the yeah. um, the Homer Simpson, exactly. You know the the Pete from Family Guy. You know, uh, yeah. They're the comic relief, and and so hopefully you know we can just have conversations that are more than just um, you know your average bumbling dad who you know everyone rolls their eyes at, or he's just a complete moron. Um, I'm not to say that that we're not, or I'm not, but you know, it's, I think, I think God has much bigger role for men than what our society uh, gives them. And obviously there's certain reasons why society has, you know, kind of pushed them off to the side because there is, um, you know, there's, there's a, there's a bad example of what it is to be a father, but there's also a redeemed um, aspect that we as Christians should all be kind of striving for and learning to, to be, you know, through our, through our walk. Yeah, no, no, excellent, uh, excellent points, um, and I, I like how you narrow that down. Um, what, what, do, what do you think has been, um, and I'll and I'll try to answer it for myself too. But I'd love to ask you first: is what do you think is like been been something surprising to you being a dad? Like, wh- what's kind of like popped up? And you're like, oh man, I didn't, I didn't think about that. I, I, I wasn't prepared for that. I didn't. This is a struggle, either in a good way. Or in a not so good way, like, like, what have you been surprised about being a dad? Sure, I mean, for me, I kind of alluded to it, but <clears throat> I, I used to think I was pretty patient, but I've mm. actually got a pretty short, pretty short wick. <laughs> mm. um, so just, I mean, because I'll go off the handle uh, pretty quickly when I feel disrespected, you know, which mm. is pretty much everything my son does. <laughs> so, uh, so I mean, like we we for a little while went to the occupational therapist, and that was really helpful. Um, I mean, it was it was from a secular point of view, but it was just a lot of really helpful practical tips, and and mostly, uh, I mean, half of them dealt with like me being able to manage my own emotions so that I could help my son to manage his, you know. Um, so I mean, I guess that's um, just kind of how uh, how frustrating it could be. Um, cause it's obviously when you're a new parent, you know, it's tiring and exhausting, whatever. You don't really start feeling that, uh, the, the, maybe the anger or the responsiveness or whatever until, you know, maybe you start seeing their will at, you know, a year or two. Um, yeah. you know, for us, it kind of blossomed, if you will, at, at four and it's been pretty challenging. Um, but I mean, I, I see that same thing, you know, it's kind of this irony of like my son's main issue, you know, when it comes to him listening to us is his uh, ability to control himself, you know, like self-regulation. <clears throat> and I'm trying to teach him how to do that while not managing my own. Like it's, it, I'm sure if you did like, you know, back out of it or see it from my wife's perspective, it's, uh, it's a little ridiculous, but you know, I mean, I'm a work in progress too. So. <laughs> yeah, that's no, that's, <clears throat> I, I love, I love that piece that you're talking about the uh, uh, being reflective on the patience part. I think that's, uh, <laughs> uh, if I'm completely honest, that's, that's something that's been, um, brought up over and over again for me. And, um, I, I think being a dad, it has, <clears throat> has shown me, uh, more my own selfishness than anything else. Um, like when I, when we first had, uh, uh when we first had Emma is my, my, my almost 10 year old, um, uh, she, uh, like babies, the babies are just like the first six months, as you know, are just all about mom. 
you know, and uh, maybe even really honestly, the first year all about mom. And so like, as a dad, I was just like, man, what do I even do? What, like, what's my role here? Like, how do I even participate in my kid's life? You know, and uh, <clears throat> you know, but like once they start gaining some autonomy and some independence and stuff like that, then like dad started, you know, like I started interacting more and, but like, I felt inconvenienced by, uh, by my kid, you know, like, Oh, I got to stop doing what I'm doing so that you can, um, uh, have your needs met. And why should I have to do that? Why should I have to sacrifice? I, I went to work like now it's my time, you know, and I, I found myself, um, uh, spending a lot of time, uh, thinking that way. And, and, and I, you know, being a Christian, uh, I was like super convicted by that, but, um, I kind of, I, I kind of didn't see it right away. And so like my wife had to kick my ass over that. And, um, a number of friends had to kick my ass on that one. And, uh, but, but I think, I think I was surprised more about how much being a parent revealed, uh, being a dad, sorry, revealed, uh, how selfish I am. Um, and how much I, I, like, I literally don't want to give up my own stuff and my own time and my own hobbies and, 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 and whatnot. I was like, I, I don't want to sacrifice for my kids. And I, I think that's been kind of surprising to me, you know, um, I don't know if you've experienced, I mean, I, I think you probably expressed some of the same things, but I, I don't know if you've experienced it exactly the way that I have, but yeah. Exactly. No, uh, probably different, <laughs> but, um, the, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I agree with you there. I mean, one of the things that it stood out to me, I don't remember exactly where I picked this up. It was like a meds group or another dad or, you know, a TV show, <laughs> but um, something that, that uh, I was told and this is always kind of rung true since I, I heard about it a few years ago was that um, frustration or anger is, <clears throat> is the result of unmet expectations. Any disappointment is unmet expectations. So it, or, <clears throat> Excuse me, my goodness. Uh, no, I think it was conflict is how it was phrased. Conflict is a result of unmet expectations. Always. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, and that rings true, especially like when you have a kid, like they wear it on their sleeves, like things don't go their way. They had a certain expectation. They you know, have a meltdown or pushback or whatever. And when I respond poorly, it's because they didn't listen to me. They're not meeting my expectation. I wanted an easier day. I just wanted them to listen. Unmet expectation, you know, like... Um, just kind of breaking it down because typically, you know, I'll let it escalate. And I'm like, wait a sec, I'm the, I'm the dad. I shouldn't be like having a shouting match with my nine-year-old. This is ridiculous. Um, you know, sometimes it takes, you know, my wife to kind of pull me aside and be like, you need to control oh, yourself. If we... audio. Uh-oh. Well, I still hear you. I can't even hear you now. Oh, I hear you. There we oh, go. Ruin, there we go. I got the you. podcast. I know. Okay. We're ruining it. Nobody wants no, it's to. it's fine. There we go. I got it now. Yeah. Well, you know, disclaimer. I mean, th so this is like the fourth podcast I've produced or published and third i've actually you know participated in uh, they're all they're all terrible at first first 10 episodes are you know you might as well throw them away but we're going to release them you know and uh that way we set the bar real low so everything after that just it's going to be beautiful it's going to be amazing that's right yeah, it's gonna be amazing. that's right um you know as i was as i was thinking through you know as we were doing some of the planning uh for this and obviously there's going to be more planning but um as i was thinking through you know topics and episodes and like what is important um you know topics to address as dads uh a couple of, a couple of them came to mind and I, and I i wrote them out and i think it's you know i think it's worth sharing at least from kind of a uh, again a, a thirty thousand foot level a cursory glance um and there's certainly there's certainly worth diving into more in individual podcasts individual episodes but um, yeah, topics that i yeah, give a little teasers for what people can expect little, and why they need to tune back taste. in. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Um, I, I think it's important for, for dads to to talk about the topic um, of worth. You know, um, are you worth something you, you know, uh, you are worthwhile? Like, I think that's, I think that's a topic that like a lot of men and a lot of, a lot of dads, uh, they don't, they don't really uh, dive into um there's no, no real reflection on that one. So, so you um, mean like there's value in being a father? Value in being a father, value in being a man. Okay. Yeah. But um, masculinity is bad because it's all toxic, right? Right. Or yeah. Maybe we'll yeah, talk about that. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think that we should talk about that. <laughs> that sounds like the, 
episode. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. A hundred percent. Um, I, I think another one that's really, really important is, uh, as a man, as a husband, as a father, you can show, I, you ready for this? You ready? ready. This, this is going to be a shocker. Uh -oh. You can show more than one emotion. That's not anger. But there's, a, I, thought I, there's I, only know, one emotion. I know, I know. Shocking, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, I'm interested to, to hear what the episode's going to be about. You can show happiness. Whoa. You can show sad. Whoa. I know. I don't want to give it all away. I don't. Okay. You okay. Know, I've like, got to leave something for the, for the. Episode. Yeah. There, there's a lot to the emotional spectrum, but you can show more than just anger. Interesting. Uh, I, I think that, I think a lot of, uh, again, dads are, are asking the question, what is God's calling uh, in my life? Honestly, if you're a human being, you're probably asking that question. You may not, even if you're not even a Christian, you might be asking that question. What is, what is, what is a higher powers calling in my life? I call that higher power God, Jesus Christ, and I am always asking, what's God's calling in my life? Sure, um, and even if we don't frame it in Christian terms, people still have a, a longing for, like, there's a purpose to this. There's got to be a meaning to it, you know? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, uh, this one, I think, is, is, is interesting, is um, what do we do as dads with anxiety? <laughs> um, I think a lot of men are... I don't like using the word ignorant, but I'm going to use the word ignorant. Uh, are ignorant to what anxiety is and if they have it. And I would generally say that most men have it. But because they're not reflective on their emotions, they don't know what they are experiencing. So what do you do with the anxiety that you have and how does that impact uh, the parenting that is happening, you know, being a dad, how's that impact you being a dad? And it does, that really does impact the way uh, that you are a dad. And then, and then I won't go into the rest, but th the last one that I, I liked that you, I think you kind of touched on a little bit is um, this notion of being a dumb dad. I, that one really has me like that one. I'm like, I think was really uh, a kind of a catalyst for wanting me to, say, Hey, Christian, let's, let's do a podcast, buddy. Let's, let's get into this because we're both dads. We both love our wives. We both have kids. Um, and we're not just the, the 1950s dad that wants to stay at home. Uh, and, uh, I'm sorry, not stay at home, but just go to work. I know. Yeah. yeah. No 1950s dad ever wanted to right. do that. Uh, go to work, you know, financially provide for their family. And that was it. Sure. Have the wife, have the mom raise the kid and you, you come home, pat him on, pat him on his head, send him off to jail. Yeah. Home. Yeah. And, and, and that we were, uh, you know, and that the dad is, is, uh, uh, kind of absent minded, uh, when it comes to the rest of the family's development, the rest of the kid's development, you know, it's just, sure. it's all about the financial uh, provision. Right. Not providing know? leadership, not providing, um, any sort of, uh, guidance or, um, what was, what was, I was going to say something really profound there, but it, it escaped me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, essentially, you know, not, uh, not providing input to, you know, the, the family being you know, emotionally unavailable and uh, they want to call it that back then, but you know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that these are uh, some of the topics, if it's certainly not all of the topics, but I'm hopeful that, these are uh, some of the topics that we're, we'll be able to um, address. And I think what's also going to be really great is, you know, our, our hope is to uh, interview um, just average dads, you know, dads that we know, you know, um, if we get really big, maybe we'll be able to interview LeBron James. Um, uh, that's, that's the goal. That's the, that's the hope, right? I think. Okay. So that's like month, <laughs> month two of the podcast. All right. Month two, maybe, maybe episode <laughs> three. Uh, of the podcast. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to look back on this episode when we are actually interviewing LeBron James. Um, as sure. a dad. Yeah. Be like, Oh, the episode is so terrible. Uh, I mean, we want to, we want to, we want to talk to other dads um, and see, you know, how are they handling it? You know, what, what are they doing? You know um, we want to encourage other dads. We want to um, 
point people, point dads back to Christ. I think that's, um, I, I think that's a really important thing to do. Um, uh, so I think that's kind of where we're hoping to go with the podcast, everybody. I like it. So I thought it's probably good for our first, first episode. Um, by the time we launch this, we'll be on all of the, the podcast apps, uh, primarily, you know, Apple play or Apple. It's not iTunes anymore. Uh, just Apple podcast um, and all the other ones. So um, yeah, let us know what you think. The review some stars that will, that'll help in our first initial launch to uh, hopefully get more people listening and subscribing. Um, do you want to close with anything? Maybe recap on the, uh, the whiskey again. It might, it might, it might be kind of fun and we can totally scrap this if we don't do it previewing or teasing. Okay. Next week, will it, we're going to have this whiskey or whatever. If you want to join us, you can, you know, grab yeah, that and, and sip that's, along. That's a, um, you know what we'll do this, uh, next week. Cause I'm staring at a bunch of whiskey bottles in my, uh, office as we, we talk. Uh, so we just tasted rabbit hole, uh, Kentucky rye whiskey, which is a fantastic, uh, 95 proof, uh, whiskey, uh, rabbit hole made in Louisville, Kentucky next week. I think our next episode, I should say, uh, we should try, uh, it's called high peaks distilling whiskey. That's, uh, based in New York. Uh, and they will be, this one will actually be a bourbon whiskey, a straight bourbon whiskey. And we will be aged two years too. Uh, we will be doing another old fashioned with it or we'll be drinking it neat, but hopefully uh, neat or old fashioned, it will be enjoyed. And so uh, if you are interested in the next episode and following us along, High Peaks Distilling Whiskey is what we will be uh, drinking next week. Uh, certainly you can also check out uh, what uh, photography I'm doing on Denim and Whiskey if you want to. And at, at some point we will probably get a Instagram uh, account going for the old fashioned dad podcast. And we'll probably also need to get some artwork going too, I imagine. Yeah. We got a few, few things to do. Yeah. I think it's a pretty good uh, first episode. So thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Okay, everybody take care. I'm Christian Bringoff. Christian Harris. Take care.